Okay, YouTubers, um, this is the, uh, I, hopefully the, the final update, well, just an update uh, about the finished product. After putting all of this effort into it, this is what I finally have come up with. Um, but this is also for those folks that may not uh, be familiar with the other videos and so forth, or, you know, just kind of looking out and trying to determine whether or not they want a, a backup system for themselves. But what I want to talk about is my solar backup system. and. It begins with these solar panels. These two solar panels on the roof, they're uh, tied together in series. There are two Kyocera panels and they're 135 watts a piece for a total of 270 watts. They generate um, both together in series about 35.4 volts, that's in, under nominal conditions. Um, but on average from 7 a.m. to about, I'd say about 4 or 5 p.m., um, they generate about 35, 36 volts uh, generally, and um, and they're again they're tied together in series, and they 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 also generate about 7.63 amps total. Okay, now let's move on to the other components that make up the solar backup system. Okay, one of the other critical components that most uh, folks. Uh, pretty uh, either haven't uh, thought of or you know they don't incorporate in their system is this transfer switch I had a electrician a certified electrician tied into my panel here and uh, as you can see right here there are with this transfer switch I bought it at Lowe's a uh, really good deal um, there are six circuits okay and this one in the middle is uh, mainly for my hot water heater okay because it'll take 240 uh, 220 volts each one of these circuits here um, is fed from a different branch okay, of the panel. Okay, this, these three circuits okay, are fed from one branch, 120, and these three circuits are fed from another branch, which is another 120. Okay, now initially the uh, electrician, uh, he explained to me that this particular uh, uh, transfer switch uh, wouldn't really fit in with my solar system the way it, you know it's designed. So we, what he had to do was he had to uh, make a special re or take a receptacle and split it in half for me, um, as opposed to one receptacle that's you know taking one input. He just and I'll show you in a second. He basically took the um, receptacle and made made two different circuits with it. So one circuit will feed these and the other circuit will feed uh, the other three. So it says this is A through C and this is D through F. Okay, and this is the 220 generator output and I keep that there because um, I'm planning on getting a uh, generator to, to at least um, you know, power up my water heater or heat my water heater and uh, you know, and power up the batteries on bad days if necessary. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, auxiliary receptacle or the other the solar system in my uh, utility room okay moving in here um, you see my solar setup okay is really really simplistic here um, it all again uh, for those folks that are just tuning into my videos it all began with uh, this little mini uh, uh, portable power solar uh, portable solar generator here uh, I simply went to an auto parts store bought a battery box a 55 amp hour battery and a uh, 800 watt inverter and I bought a dolly from Costco for like you know the dolly was like 20 bucks and a 5 watt solar panel and uh, based on my success with that and I uh, you know I decided to move on to bigger and better things um, now the system itself is, is, you know in its entirety is composed of a charge controller which is on the upper right uh, I'm sorry upper left a battery disconnect switch a battery monitor a shunt and a charge controller okay uh, not a charge but a uh, a 2000 watt inverter okay and also the stored energy that comes in from the solar panels is stored in these batteries uh, there are six batteries tied together in parallel uh, the inverter is uh, basically tied to this um, auxiliary uh, receptacle through the power cables and uh, let's talk about each little individual piece here this is a SunSaver MPPT or Maximum Power Point Tracking Charge Controller. It's about rated at 15 amps. Um, this charge controller will take power coming in, or voltage coming in from the uh, voltage and current coming in from the 
panels up on the roof and step it down to the appropriate battery voltage and current to charge the batteries. Um, these two wires, positive and negative here, uh, will also are, are feeding energy to the battery. Each one of those wires are 10 gauge wires. Um, below that is a battery disconnect switch. It's rated at 300 amps. Okay, this is a auto racing type switch and uh, the reason I have that there is because um, even though it's a 12 volt system it does generate a lot of current not like a typical 120 uh, AC type uh, circuit but uh, since it's coming from the battery voltage you can you take the amps that are rated at the AC on the AC side and you have to multiply it by 10 so in essence it, since the system generates a lot of voltage I need a switch that can handle that volt that voltage not voltage but current um, since it again it, since it does generate a lot of current you have to have a switch that is rated for that current so this is three rated at 300 amps so it can definitely handle it um, up here is a trimetric battery monitor it's a trimetric 2020 from Bogart engineering this particular battery monitor uh, will give me the voltage the amps coming into the system or coming out of the system and percent of battery full it will also give me the amp hours until the battery are the amp hours um, uh, from full okay if you've been using your batteries and you're drawing power out it'll tell you how much you need to uh, put back into the battery to make them full it'll also give you some additional information like a day since charged day since equalized and also the cumulative amp hours that you've taken out of the battery like right now I've taken out over 362 amp hours out of the battery since I've uh, put the system in operation. It also tells me the highest voltage that the system has uh, had since it's in operation, um, which is 15.2. At that point, it seems that the uh, charge controller was trying to equalize the batteries or give them a bulk charge. And the lowest voltage that was in the system, which was zero volts. Okay, moving on at the bottom left here, you see this shunt. This shunt is part of the trimetric battery monitor system here. The shunt allows the trimetric uh, to receive amp information. That's how I get my amps. Uh, the current passes through this shunt, this shunt, and these signal wires actually transmit that information up to the battery monitor. Typically, you buy this separate uh, from the shunt. And when you buy this, you have to, you know, you have to specify what type of shunt that you need. Um, when I bought mine, there were two different types. Uh, be sure if you get one, be sure to specify the correct type. Um, and that information should be on the website wherever you want to buy your uh, battery monitor. Okay, moving on to the inverter. Um, this is a 2,000 watt power inverter. Uh, there are many different types of inverters that you can buy um, on the internet and at various places. Uh, the two most common types are the modified wave or modified sine wave power inverters and you have the pure sine wave power inverters. I, this is a pure sine wave inverter. I did own a modified sine wave inverter. However, um, the modified sine wave inverter uh, caused some havoc with some sensitive equipment. They warn you that you know it, it can you know uh, you know mess with sensitive equipment but I had no idea how much it could mess with it. As a matter of fact, uh, I had some uh, household gadgets in the house plugged into the outlets and they fried, it fried a couple of them. Um, we can talk about the burning smell and all. So I would recommend that you get a, a pure sine wave inverter if you have the money and you can, you can get one. Um, if you're just running power tools or some lamps or some, you know, some uh, non-sensitive equipment, modified sine wave is fine. But if you have, if you have a choice, get a pure sine wave. Uh, moving down here, you see the battery bank. Uh, the battery bank, this one is composed of six Optima AGM, that's absorbed glass matte batteries. Okay, They're sealed. And uh, being that they're absorbed glass matte seal batteries, um, I don't have to worry about, they're maintenance free obviously, and I don't have to worry about the hydrogen gas issue, so I don't have to worry about ventilation or temperature. Uh, with these batteries. Each one of these batteries is 55 amp hour for a total, if you, and tied in parallel, they give me a total of 330 amp hours. 
okay now a lot of people they you know some folks wonder um, okay well you got 330 amp hours okay what exactly can you do with that well if you do the math let's say for instance you have a freezer okay and this is this entire system is a solar backup system that's what I'm using it for I can use it for partial off-the-grid application also because I have the capacity but let's say for strictly a backup system okay let's say you have a freezer that generates 164 watts okay to determine how long you could run it you say you take this you use this 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 mathematical formula you say basically the watts which is 164 okay divided by the system or the voltage the system voltage which is 12 volts so 164 divided by 12 okay that'll give you like 14 okay it takes 14 amps to run this system okay so you would take 330 the amp hours of the battery bank and then you would divide that by 14 and then you'll get the you'll get an approximation of you know how many hours that you could run this I think I could run that freezer for like uh, 27 hours or something like that but anyway again it gives you an approximation and I say it's an approximation because these inverters are not as efficient as you would hope okay this inverter is about 85 percent efficient so if I really wanted to calculate, I would say, um, okay, 164 watts of, you know, the watts of my freezer divided by 12 volts times 1.12, which is the inefficiency uh, of the inverter, that would give me roughly around a little over 14 amps, okay? And I would take 330 and divide it by that number, and then I will get the total number of hours I can expect to run my freezer okay so that kind of gives me the capacity all right uh, the in information about the capacity now as you can see right here I have two sockets or two cords plugged into the receptacles on the power inverter now each one of these I mentioned that by a transfer switch that you know they have to be split okay 120 going to one phase or simulate one phase uh, that, or simulate the two phases that would typically come into a house or 220 okay so essentially this this receptacle will feed circuits A, B, and C. This receptacle will uh, feed circuits D, E, and F. Now the electrician actually took this particular receptacle and split them up for me so that each one would be individual circuits. Okay, and plugged into the inverter that will give me essentially my 220. Um, this is a pretty decent inverter okay and um, it can get kind of noisy because I got two fans on the back but let's look at it in action okay I'm gonna come out here to the transfer switch and I'm gonna go from line which is utility to the generator okay I flip it up And I'm going to turn on my inverter here through this connect switch here. And you can hear my inverter kick on. Looking at this LED display here, it tells me the input voltage. You don't, you can't see it from your uh, vantage point, but I'll tell you what I see here. It's giving me, it said the input voltage is 12.9 and it's taking out 10 watts. Okay, so there's something on the other end of this that's pulling 10 watts of power. Looking at my battery monitor, I can see that there is 6.1 amps or 6.2 amps coming from the system. So that means you see this negative sign here. This negative sign says its power is being taken from the battery bank. Okay, that's the system in action. Now with this kill switch, I can just simply turn it off. Everything. Okay. I get the alarm from my inverter saying, hey, I've just lost power, and it shuts off, and that kills everything. And as you see right here, the, the negative sign went away, and now I'm putting 1.5 amps back into the system. This light here just means I'm charging. I still got daylight. It's about uh, a little after 5 p.m., and I still got daylight. I'm still charging. There's still 13 point, there's 13.2 volts coming into the system. Okay, now that essentially is 
my solar backup system in a nutshell. Very simplistic, but very effective.